So, first of all, uh, the poll, what's the role of micro surrounding at breast uh, cancer? Please read and choose the answer. This uh, uh, session has such a cosmogenic name. That's why I'd like to get above the routine and above the everyday things and uh, to consider some strategic and systematic issues related to breast cancer. Please start the voting. Well, definitely. Now we talk about uh, the micro uh, surrounding, microenvironment. The first thing you think of is the cell component. Uh, lymphocytes, first of all, uh, since uh, uh, lately uh, due to immune oncology agents uh, used by oncologists, this very component uh, attracts attention. It's a very heterogeneous uh, cell population from the point of view of the uh, content and uh, the location of different different subpopulations and the special relation varies a lot. Variations are big. There are two extreme manifestations. They are obvious for anyone who looks into the microscope. A right microfecture is a so-called cold tumor with no stroma infiltrations with lymphoid cells. To the left, there's a hot tumor with a lymphoid infiltrator. So the level of that in the breast cancer stroma is related uh, to the uh, response to systemic treatment. This uh, value may differ depending on different molecular subpopulations of breast cancer, on different subtypes of uh, cells uh, which are in the lymphoid infiltrate. Um, a lot of attention is attracted by regulatory uh, emphasis, uh, macrophila macrophags uh, to uh, global um, populations, the anti and pro tumorogenic, uh, and uh, a lot of Info is accumulated on this um, issue. Uh, definitely, PDL uh, one is a test widely used in practice. Uh, enables to assess, uh, to a certain extent, uh, the uh, features of that uh, cellular surrounding. And uh, the histology enables us to assess the relation between different uh, subpopulations of uh, uh, cells and between the uh, tumor and immune cells that have this marker. We actively use it, however, it's not easy, and uh, there is still a high heterogeneity regarding the available test systems, uh, clones, platforms. Uh, this uh, makes uh, one using different methodology approaches at assessment of this micro surrounding parameters. So we can encounter false positive and false negative results, and for each patient, it may have uh, bad consequences. Analytics uh, makes the test not um, easy, and uh, repeatability between the researchers isn't very high. Expression of PDL1 has a heterogeneity which is not only spatial but timely as well. This uh, creates a certain operational uh, risks uh, from the point of view of uh, material choice for testing, a volume of material necessary for adequate assessment of PDL1 status, and we have a number of regulatory uh, problems, and the test is expensive. Uh, that uh, limits its practice. In fact, uh, micro surrounding is not uh, only the cells. It's uh, much more than that. Uh, besides the elements of lymphoid infiltrate, it includes also the stroma cells, fibroblasts, uh, both normal and cancer-associated uh, fibroblasts, uh, which um, are important for the development of the primary uh, tumor and for realization of its metastatic potential. Besides, the stroma component uh, has uh, vessels, uh, walls, adipocytes, uh, uh, walls components, and uh, extracellular matrix, uh, as well as the moleculars and hemokines uh, that um, um, impact the tumor. As for the vessel component of the micro surrounding or environment, a while ago, uh, this story was popular for studies. Uh, Antiangiogenic uh, 
drugs or agents who were very promising, including for breast cancer. There were preclinical data that proved efficacy of agents aimed at tumor vessels. However, these agents are too toxic, so they were never included in the clinical practice. Only bevacizumab in combined modes is used in certain situations. What can morphologists do to assess this component? We have quite a lot of opportunities. Traditional staining, we can assess the density of microvessel flow within the tumor. It's associated with the forecast and the realization of metastatic potential. That's quite logical. Besides, we have a number of additional tests, immunologist chemical ones, that enable us to assess not only the density of vessels, their maturity, whether they have or not parasites, and expression of different growth factors and their receptors associated with vessels proliferation. In a number of just types of um, uh, breast cancer, a phenomenon is um, described vasculogenic uh, mimicry uh, when uh, cells uh, may uh, form uh, vessel channels that get fed from the blood flow. As of today, we can assess uh, quality and quantity and um, thus uh, New methods um, may make it simple and effective. That's in future. Strom is a heterogenic uh, notion. It includes a lot of uh, cells, including fibroblasts, uh, that in case of breast cancer may have different genesis. This may be mobilized on stroma cells uh, of um, the gland um, uh, tissues or um, a spine cells, and they can form a pool of cancer-associated fibroblasts, which are important for paracrine regulation of a tumor, its invasiveness. And we also have data uh, that this is uh, um, supporting the epithelial mesenchymal um, transition, mesenchymal uh, stem cells. The mechanism of this uh, transition is one of the leading uh, ways of development of metastasis. If we look even more globally, uh, the mammography density of uh, breast is associated with the risk of breast cancer. The more dense are the parts, the higher are the chances uh, for uh, cancer. Usually the most dense parts are developed uh, cancer. This is partly related uh, to complications of early diagnosis at uh, high uh, density of uh, breast tissues, uh, but most likely it's a kind of a, a biological predisposition uh, initial in the tissue of the breast. There is another concept of the so-called uh, pre-malignant niche. We know that tumor cells, including epithelial ones, uh, keep appearing in our bodies, uh, but not many of them are enabled uh, to create uh, a tumor, to develop it, so that it can be detected in a macroscopic um, manner. So these uh, uh, local stromal dispositions perhaps enable a number of cells to realize their malignant potential. In stroma, we also have an extracellular matrix. It's a set of different proteins, mainly collagen, and breast cancer is an example of the so-called sclerosis cancer uh, with um, um, development of stroma and thick bundles. Uh, with a cross-linking that makes this uh, uh, tissue very dense. It also determines the ability of vessels to remodel and infiltration with different immune cells. This perhaps determines the response to therapy. If we regard the carcinomas that respond best to neoadjuvant therapy, these are 
uh, tumors with a low density of um, stroma with a triple negative uh, phenotype or HER2 uh, positive um, phenotype. So perhaps this is related not only to the biosubtype of the tumor, but also to the ability of stroma to let the agent to the um, tumor cells and uh, let lymphoid cells infiltrate uh, the breast tissue. Of interest is the distant metastasis. It's known that for breast cancer metastasis develop at early stage, yet before the clinically evident tumor development, some five, seven years before uh, breast cancer develops with uh, metastasis. And it's not a random process. Uh, it's, uh, we have um, data on animal models, but um, it says that the tumor is preparing the ground for metastasis. Um, and um, uh, there are certain distant sites where the metastasis go. It's uh, usually the uh, spine, uh, the breast cancer cells. Uh, can mimic uh, to the bone uh, tissue regarding its molecular um, and perhaps this explains uh, the uh, heterogeneity with hemopoietic uh, stem cells and the uh, things that uh, vesiculars and exosoma coming from the uh, tumors uh, may get into the distant sites uh, and prepare the matrix. Uh, and from the point of view of uh, blood supply, development of vessels, so the ground for the cells to get there, to get fixed there, and to keep developing. Now regarding the uh, uh, spine, uh, the metastasis in the spine are uh, later uh, the pool for metastasis. That's uh, related to receptor positive uh, uh, cancers, while receptor negative cancers are uh, similar to visceral uh, bodies. Uh, they are more related to lungs or molecular uh, substances. They issue prepare the ground in the these locations. They may have special uh, receptors to uh, lung vessels and endotheliums. Uh, HER2 positive uh, breast cancer has uh, uh, frequent metastasis into central nervous uh, system, and uh, uh, it um, may uh, get through the hematoencephalic barrier and uh, uh, prepare uh, the transition. If we regard uh, the impact of uh, the surroundings uh, on the metastasis, uh, it's not only the local impact and uh, making easier the transition and conditions for invasion. Uh, they also prepare uh, the ground in a remote location, so that later cells may get fixed there. It's quite uh, a long period. Tumor cells often get into the blood flow, but most of them die in the blood flow. Some cells may get connected to thrombocytes, get covered uh, by thrombocytes, uh, hence they are not caught by the immune system, and they can reach uh, remote uh, locations where they are moving. Since they have a certain homing or similarity to a certain metastatic niche, which is already prepared by the primary vessels due to different uh, uh, secretion uh, mechanisms. Only part of the cells getting into the distance, it may proliferate. They form the so-called pool of metastatic stem cells. Frequently, uh, they are in dormancy. In the beginning, this is regulated by the micro surrounding uh, that uh, uh, provides this mode of um, dormancy. And uh, the microenvironment, uh, the local and systemic, uh, helps reactivation of cells, uh, and uh, then proliferation starts, uh, and then the distant uh, foci are colonized. Now the question, what's the role of microenvironment at breast cancer? 
whether uh, the cell molecular component of the microsurrounding is determining from the point of view of um, breast cancer, does it determine its uh, progression and response to therapy? Can modification of micro environment uh, in remote uh, sites and foci and uh, organs uh, help the preparation of the future foci for metastasis, uh, the fixing of those um, uh, tumor seeds? Or perhaps the infiltration simply enables us to choose the uh, patients with the best response for immune therapy. I believe uh, the answers now shall be more singular, and the audience uh, will agree that number four, everything above mentioned, is a correct answer. It enables us to see the tumor in a different way. At present, uh, this is the second birth uh, of the tissue-based methods. Uh, based on assessment of tissue modifications. At present, we have resources and technologies that enable us not only to mark or stain different components of tumor and its microenvironment, we can also do the quantity assessment and relations between different components. This info is of vital importance to understand the biology of tumor and uh, this is a great resource for medical practice, uh, for treatment practice. Uh, for this info to be translated into our everyday uh, practice, uh, we need to do a lot. We should master the methodology of um, identification, detection, and visualization of those relations, their assessment, analysis, and interpretation of all this uh, data. It's a lot to do. And then we can subdivide these combinations of factors and give the clinicist a tool that will enable to individualize and optimize the approach to a patient's treatment, each patient's treatment. We're in the beginning of the way, but we're already moving. Anna, let's still provide the results of voting. So please comment the results. The audience uh, practitioners seems like they pay attention to the data which were already uh, passed from research to practice. If we talk about the pathologist's work, that's the assessment of a cell and immunology component micro environment. This is now translated to the clinical practice, but all the other elements are of um, high importance as well. Simply so far, we can't use this information for each patient individually. Good luck to you.